In this video, you'll be learning about this topic. Bitcoin mining uses so much energy, it will boil the oceans. It's our goal. This is what we got into this industry for. Really just trying to, to increase the temperature of, of the world's oceans. No, I mean, <laughs> to start this particular topic, like I think it has to be laid bare that the Bitcoin wears its energy consumption to a certain degree on its sleeve. Like anybody can point at the network due to the fact that it's an open protocol, an open source protocol, all the data about what's happening in the blocks and the amount of computing power dedicated to, to bringing those blocks to market and the amount of hash rate dedicated to that, which is estimated based on how fast or slow blocks are coming in every 2016 blocks, you can sort of ballpark how much energy is being consumed to produce the amount of hashes that are being produced to secure the network and add blocks to the Bitcoin blockchain. So right off the bat, Bitcoin has this, I don't want to say an unfair advantage, it is easy to pick on and point at and say, hey, look at how much energy the Bitcoin network is consuming. Whereas if you had to get a, a measurement of the amount of energy that is used to back the US dollar reserve system, and that includes things like the military industrial complex, all the buildings that run the Federal Reserve Banks and the, the commercial banks in the US banking system, all the, the commutes to and from work of the people that work in those buildings, the amount of paper expended in those buildings, the amount of energy and air conditioner and heating consumed in those buildings, that number just isn't public. The extent and effort to which you'd have to go to actually get that information to compare to Bitcoin is extremely hard. And like it's not easy to find that information. So Bitcoin sort of added this advantage right off the bat with this particular argument that it can't really be compared, truly compared to, to its competitors because they don't wear their energy consumption on their sleeve, just like the Bitcoin network does. And then, which is what Harry and I sort of know very intimately due to what we're doing specifically in the field with Bitcoin mining is if people came to understand the sources of energy that is being converted into electricity to mine Bitcoin paints a bit of a different picture where you're not really creating net new energy to, to mine Bitcoin. You're not going out and drilling a hole in the earth to pull out oil to mine Bitcoin. Specifically, Bitcoin miners, again, because they are incentivized to drive their cost of power production down as low as possible, they go and seek out extremely cheap sources of energy, which tend to be stranded renewables or fossil fuels like natural gas in oil and gas fields that, that would otherwise be wasted via flaring or venting in some cases. So number one, it wears its energy consumption on its sleeve. And number two, due to the, the just the pure incentives that drive cost down as low as possible, Bitcoin miners are going to disparate lands to, to find wasted and stranded energy. Preston, I, I have three assumptions I want to challenge in this, like as a very good sort of baselining for this whole discussion. The first is that energy consumption is not a bad thing. If you look over the long arc of history, the best societal biomarkers for sort of societal advancement and, and maturity and quality are all extremely correlated to energy consumption per capita, healthcare, education, nutrition, infant mortality, all of the things that you would look at and say, wow, those are moving in the right direction also correlate incredibly tightly to energy density at the population level. So that's sort of the, the first level setting that I think is important in a discussion like this is like, it's not like the energy is, you know, being used to, to spin a whirlpool in the ocean that never gets, that never touches anything. This energy, you know, that, that gets consumed by us as a society delivers utility and delivers good outcomes. So that's the first, the first piece. The second is that I think energy in, in the context of Bitcoin is really discussed as waste. And I just challenge that premise first and foremost. The Bitcoin network is directly tied to the laws of thermodynamics, as I'm sure we're going to get into in, in more detail. But that tight relationship between thermodynamic laws and the value proposition of the Bitcoin network, the Bitcoin network delivers incredible value to millions of people all over the world. So that energy is not wasted. That energy is properly utilized for positive economic outcomes. For people, you know, so I immediately challenge the assumption that that it's that it's quote unquote wasted as as if it's not being used for something of value. It's absolutely being used for something of value. The quality of the Bitcoin network delivers tremendous value. And then third, and this is another kind of foundational assumption around this this argument set is that when I plug a new miner in, I'm not generating another marginal kilowatt hour. That kilowatt hour already exists, and it's being consumed by me. But me plugging in a new miner doesn't make the coal turbine spin one more time around the axle or the, or the nuclear turbine heat the steam one iota more 
or the, you know, the nat gas pipeline pump in one more unit. That's not how the energy grid is designed. It's not how the energy generation and transmission system, certainly in the United States and, and not elsewhere as well, it's not how that works. And so we need to go back to a bit more of a first principle understanding of how energy gets generated, transmitted, and consumed for us to have this discussion in a substantive way. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next podcast episode and new investing resources. What are your takeaways and thoughts on this discussion? Let us know in the comments section below. 